Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video today um, on one of my favorite things to do, um, which is bookmaking. So it's a nice cold snowy day here in St. Louis. I'm just gonna switch the camera around so you can see it's my lovely neighbor's house in the area over there, but we're getting a lot of snow. Um, and <clears throat> there's nothing more fun to do on a snowy day than play. <laughs> Either to go outside and play outdoors or to find something lovely to do inside. So I wanted, uh oh, and I'm back, sorry. That was my dog reacting to my partner who was going outside to shovel the walk. Um, at any rate, something that I do a lot of um, and have been getting more and more into is bookmaking with eco prints. And so, for example, here is one of the accordion books that I made. Um, <clears throat> this was made with, so you can see the stitching. It was made with black linen here at the bottom. The top of it is made from a piece of antique, I think it was from an antique pillowcase that I dyed in avocado skin and pit dye, which amazingly comes out pink. And then I wrapped a bunch of rusty things in it and it came out with the rust marks as well as all of the avocado skin dye. Um, this is an accordion book and I'm a big fan of these and I'm going to share with you a bunch of some things I've got on the on the burner right now. Um, as you can see, like as you go inside the book, like here's the little cover. These are made from eco prints, which I'm extremely fond of. Um, and anyone who knows my work very well at all, whether it's ceramics or um, or you know fibers, knows that I'm really obsessive about. Um, at least I am right. I have been for the last few years. Um, with, with um, Japanese honeysuckle, which is the plant that I used for these eco prints. Just making sure we can actually see these, yeah. Oh, that's one of my favorites there. So Japanese honeysuckle or bush Japanese, bush honeysuckle, um, which grows all over the Midwest of the United States and um, really all over the country. It's an invasive species which is kind of an interesting topic. I may go into that in more detail at some point. Um, this particular plant has actually become a major part of my entire practice uh, as, a, as an artist and as a Buddhist. You know, what is an invasive thing? What is something that is invasive or that we regard as invasive? And then, you know, how do we encounter with that? What does it mean? What is it... Um, you know, what does it imply? What does it do to us? So, yeah, here's the back. This is the other, this the other, and no, nope, that's not, here we go. This is the back. This is the other angle. So it's a double-sided book, um, and it's largely, I, I chose in this case to keep it just stitched. I think as you can see there, I use stitching um, to bring the pages together the accordion but yeah it's a pretty pretty plant and it's it's a double-sided it's double-sided paper so regardless of which way you fold this book you can see the prints and at this time for these books I have not included any text um, I have done in past with some other projects that I've that I've done um, and in particular one that I I did in a show but these at the moment are just the books. Here's another one. This one was made from a piece of uh, just muslin. I buy a lot of muslin at um, fabric stores like Joanne Fabrics in the, um, what's the section called? It's where you get, um, wow, I, you know, I get on video and I can't think. Suddenly things that are very ordinary to me are no longer immediately accessible. Um, remnants, that's what I'm thinking, remnants section. Um, and I pull out this paper 
or rather this fabric, and this one I used Rust and Tea. I think it was Earl Grey. Um, so you get this kind of interesting blue color that comes through. I don't know if that's coming through as well on the camera as I hope, but this seems to be pretty true to, um, at least what I can see, it seems to be pretty true to what's here. Uh, and then on the inside, <clears throat> I used this like corrugated cardboard that, in black. Um, as you can see on the inside, and then I need to get a cup of tea. There's the matching sort of colors and tones on the inside of the book. So this book was also rusted. It was rusted with tea and obviously rust. And um, I used some Japanese honeysuckle in here as well. Not sure how much of it will be all that visible. There's some. You can kind of see the stem structure and some of the shape of the leaves coming through. And then, and this was an early book or early um, attempt at, um, at this work, probably back in 2016. But I didn't actually turn it into a book or use the particular. Um, Oh, that's one of my favorite pages. Where did it go here? Um, I didn't use this particular dyeing method <clears throat> or turn it into a book until very recently. I think I did it over the summer. <clears throat> I've mentioned, excuse me, I've mentioned in another video, I spent a lot of the summer being really depressed. And um, one of the ways that I manage emotions and, and things that I'm trying to process psychologically Aside from writing, obviously, which is very helpful, and meditating, uh, meditation practice is art practice. And most of my art practices are very much about mindful engagement with things. Um, and this one, obviously, this is also double-sided. But that process, has it's deeply informative in terms of just, you know, um, coping with pain and coping with sadness and grief. Um, I find that, that if I make art of some kind, something that slows me down, something that, especially when it puts me back in contact with nature, is going to change my world. So I'm a big fan um, of that work, you know, for that reason. So I made several books this summer. Here's a more simple one. It's just linen and wow, you can really you can see here that's where I overdid the glue um, when I was trying to use the glue to get it pulled together um, but either way as you open the book there we have my favorite plant my favorite plant that is not really my favorite on so many levels um, and yet here it is but you know a really rather stunning um, print there the object below it, right here, um, where's my fingers? This finger, where is it going? Across the page, here it is. Um, that, this particular flower, if you look closely, you can see that that's a flower. Um, I think it came off of, it came off of a plant, like a, I can't remember the name of it, maybe a, a manzanilla or something like that, that was red. Um, and this has been cooked with tea for a very long time and it changes, you know, kind of adds some dimension to what's going on in these pictures. So you'll see like hibiscus flowers are a big one that I like to work with, um, in these books and prints. Ooh, some pretty blues that came through on this page. Oops, it's this, this side came out blue. A lot of times a red flower will come out blue, which is always kind of lovely to see. I think this was done, just double checking, um, it was, this was taken, these plants rather, were taken late in the year. And I can tell because as you look, you can see that there are berries on them, um, which I really love. I love when the berry like imprint comes through. The berries themselves tend not to print, but they leave a mark, which I find really fascinating. At any rate, this, oh, look at that one. Wow, 
that's a hibiscus, that pretty blue on this side. That it was a red or a burgundy hibiscus flower. And then we have it mixed. So as you can see, yeah, this, this particular one was done with a lot of different um, flowers as well as the Japanese honeysuckle. And I love the form of a book for displaying these prints so much. Um, and I have so many prints. And I, I'll probably talk about this a lot um, in some of the other videos that I've made so far. I don't know that I've put out all of them yet. It seems to take me a long time to get videos uploaded because I'm new to this and it's um, something I'm still getting, you know, getting used to and adjusting to. But... Um, something I'll talk a lot about is the relationship that I've cultivated over the last few years with plants and trees. It's really life-changing. Um, it really has opened me up to a whole new level of awareness. Um, gives me an idea. I don't know. I'm really kind of making these videos for myself as much as anything else because I really feel a need to just catalog what I do and and kind of make a almost like a video blog and just put it out there because why not um, and, and see if like-minded people want to connect um, and find out how that's gonna go I think somebody just turned on a light next door floodlight just came on and took my attention at any rate that has changed me deeply um, the more I've worked with plants the more I needed to work with plants and the more paper I created. I have so much paper that is covered in plants um, from this process because of the process and the act of gathering, you know, the plants and the flowers, um, assembling them into bundles, cooking them in tea uh, or steaming them or putting them in. Um, I, I'm really big fan of avocado skins and pits. I may try, I haven't done this yet. I thought about trying just to see what would happen. Um, putting some of it in with indigo dye could be very interesting. I'd need to use a lot of pressure just to kind of get it to go in it the right way. Um, but it's fascinating. So something I had thought about doing was creating an installation piece using accordion books. So here is one of them. I prematurely pulled it apart while I was babbling. But you can see this is a thick sucker. Look at that. It's ridiculous. Um, I saw this idea of closing it like that on Pinterest and thought, score, I love that. What a cool idea. Um, and, you know, so I got a whole bunch. I have all this black linen. I got some binding tape, you know, to do the, the backs. And what I'd like to do and, and begin doing and have started doing, and I'll show you that in a minute, is creating these lengthy accordion books right as you can see it's very lengthy which are double-sided what a beautiful piece um double-sided right so you can see and finding a way to open the books on the floor like so but extend the the um pages all the way up to the ceiling and have them suspend so that the prints are visible on both sides and you can walk around them and through them. And I just love that idea. Um, I've seen that kind of similar things, kind of similar things done, just different ways of using the form of a book. Um, I like installation work. I trained originally in theater and um, really in, in acting and directing and movement. And the idea of something that's interactive that you can get up and walk through and see is really exciting. So over the next few months, um, you're going to be seeing me work with all of these. So these are books. These are accordion books that um, most of which have been assembled so far as I've like pulled them. Let's see if I can find one that's kind of semi, semi ready to go. I think that one's all... We'll find out. Let's find out. I haven't picked them up and messed with them in a while. Nope. So a lot of them are, you know, put together into little packets like this, uh, where I know that this is going to be one book by itself. Um, and then what I will do is use uh, tape 
it's a very specific tape. I don't have it on hand right now. I'll have to do another maybe maybe I'll do like a how I make a book video and do it, you know, with the other view so that you can see like a bird's eye view. But I'll be taping them together, right? So they're made up of these beautiful little pieces of paper, right? And um, those accordions that have to be assembled like so. So I'll be doing that. I've got, I think a large portion of these in this in this box have already had that process done to them because I spent a lot of time doing that over the summer, as I mentioned. Um, but time will tell. At any rate, accordion books and eco prints, fun stuff. So I will hopefully have more videos like this to share with you guys later, um, especially as I get more of these done and move forward with it. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions or if there's anything that you want to know more about, please leave, a, leave a, uh, a comment. Very few people are watching my channel right now, so doing comments is very easy and exciting to engage with. All right, that's all for now. Thanks. Bye.